Paint splatters on screen revealing a series of images, a woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier pinning atop a mountain. The paint drip splatters revealing text in print and braille, unsightly opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. I had such a fun time pouring soap, and I've had lots of requests to do more crafty DIY projects and rate how accessible they are. So today we are going to be making some client gifts for Robbie and making bath bombs. I have all of the ingredients. If you want to follow along at home, please feel free to do so. I will list all of the instructions down below, but please know that I am not an expert. This is my very first time making bath bombs, so I might make some mistakes along the way. If you want to follow along, the ingredients you are going to need are Epsom salts, citric acid, which I picked up on Amazon. If I can remember, I will leave a link down below, cornstarch, melted coconut oil or almond oil. I'm going to do coconut today because less people are allergic to that, baking soda, molds, measuring spoons and measuring cups, large and small, and optionally soap colorants or mica powder. I have soap colorants that we use for our soap pouring, essential oils if you want it to have a smell, any additional things that you want to put in like lavender, orange peel, I have some lavender here. I also have two bowls, one large, one small, and a muffin tin to leave them safe while they dry for 24 hours. Let's get started. Let's hyperspeed through some of this measuring because it's not very interesting to watch and fairly straightforward. I combined two cups of baking soda, one cup of citric acid, one cup of cornstarch, and one cup of Epsom salts in a large bowl, and a small handful of lavender, which I mixed together with my hands. Then in my small bowl, I combined four teaspoons of oil, and then things got a little more complicated. What's the next step? Four teaspoons of essential oil. That's a lot of essential I, oil. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go a little lighter than that. that the seems other recipe excessive. calls for two and a half tablespoons of coconut oil to ten drops of essential oil. So there's a big, big disparity. Big disparity, huge. Okay. Let's just go with what feels right. I'm gonna go with a teaspoon of essential oil. I think, yeah, I think that's, that's quite probably, generous. It's probably generous, but it's kind of somewhere in between. Okay. This, I think, is where it gets to be the hard part, because I'm having trouble telling when it's full with gloves on, so I'm just going to listen for when it starts dropping out of the spoon. Okay, I just felt it drip over my fingers. What's the next step, sir? Just a few drops of food coloring. Okay. Nice. What's, a, what's a fairly kind of neutral color? Purple's all right. Pull that out for me. Okay. So I'm so just gonna, strong. yeah, that is very strong. I'm just gonna so give this a little squeeze. The amount of okay. oil it was calling for. Yeah, that that would be too much, I think. Okay, so we got a few drops in there. I'm gonna give it a little stir here. And now we are ready to combine, and we have to do this very, very slow. Oh wait, wasn't there two tablespoons of distilled water? Glad I caught that. That would have been bad. Mm -hmm. Tablespoons? Teaspoons. Teaspoons. Okay, so we're going to find our teaspoon again. Now we need to combine very slowly until we reach the consistency of wet sand. Not soaking sand, but wet sand. Just put a team a few drops in from the spoon at a time. And we want to avoid bubbling as much as possible because the fizzy bubbly part is what we want in the tub. This next bit took a little bit of time so we're gonna hyperspeed again. I took one spoonful at a time of the wet ingredients and mixed them into the dry ingredients with my hands until I felt them well combined and then I repeated the process with another spoonful of liquid. I did that over and over until I had all of the liquid combined into the dry ingredients and it started getting a little bit of a damp texture to it the more I mixed. Robbie's suggestion at the end to get all of the wet ingredients was to add a bit of the dry mixture back into the wet bowl and smoosh it around so I got all of the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and that worked pretty well. What's the color like? It's kind of just pink. Pink. Very super light pink. Interesting, because we used purple dye, so maybe we do need a little more dye. I can't add any more in this batch. The key is definitely going to be just keep working it in your hands for quite a while because it's definitely becoming more usable the longer you mix. It's, yeah, it's starting to 
form balls in my hand. I'm nervous. I know this is very difficult to do, so I want to give it its best chance. I might give it just one or two sprays with the water. Or with the water, just that's more what. Oil. Uh, I don't think more oil. I've watched a lot of things where people just start adding more oil and it gets weird. So I have seen when people say the consistency isn't right that they spray water in because it distributes the water. So I'm gonna spray from far away. One, two, three. Yeah, that's helping, 100% that's helping. This is now clumping a lot better. So. Once it's all in place, it'll just evaporate out. Once all the water evaporates out, you will just be left with the bath bombs. Yeah, I would definitely describe this as wet sand now. Okay, so the next step is going to be actually getting them into the molds. I have a few different sizes because that's what came with the kit. And from what I understand, you're supposed to pack it in as tightly as you can into the mold on both sides, overfill it slightly, and then smush it together as hard as you can. And then it should release from the mold and stay together. You flip it upside down into the muffin tin and it should release from the other side. Let's see if we're so lucky. <laughs> so, I'm gonna pack, pack, pack that into the mold. Just press as hard as I can, packing it really nice and tight. And then, let's see if we can press this together. I might have overfilled it too much, but we'll see. I definitely overfilled it too much. I am not strong. Holy crow! I just made a bath bomb. That was so straightforward. Wow. Okay. I'm used to things failing really hard the first time. Then we were on to bath bomb number two. I repeated the process, packing into both sides and then shoving it together as hard as I could. Once I had it together, I ran my thumb around the center joint of the mold to remove any excess. Yay! Two! I've never seen people actually succeed their first time. Maybe I just kind of have watched a lot of tutorials and seen what people did wrong. And I mean, we're not using any of those fancy bath bomb making machines that just kind of use the hydraulic pressure to crush them in there. Cause that's what a lot of people do. You know what I might recommend? What? Um, taking whatever the packages, packaging is going to be for it and actually putting that inside of the cup so you can lift it out by the packaging and it'll all stay together. That's smart. Maybe, I, I don't wanna put it in the packaging yet cause it's gonna be paper packaging. Okay. But I do like your idea Maybe let's put some muffin tins underneath because then we can pull it out by the muffin tin. That's a great idea. The muffin tins worked really well. I strongly recommend. All right, we are on to our next batch here. Every single one of the bath bombs ended up working out. There was a couple times when I didn't press it quite enough and I could feel that it was starting to come apart when I was pulling it apart, but I just smushed it again and it seemed to stick together really well. Mix up our next batch. I've got all of the ingredients already measured out into the bowls. And we're gonna go with blood orange this time. So we've got a really nice tangerine colored dye and blood orange essential oil. So I'm just mixing the dry at the moment. And then we're going to, oh, I can taste the baking soda. <laughs> it aerosolizes. And if you're using the Arm & Hammer baking soda, it's one full container per batch if you're using the same recipe as me. Essential oil. I've moved them into a much smaller bowl because there is so little wet, the dry, that it's gonna make it a lot easier to handle and stir as we're dumping in. I think the key to this is slow and steady wins the race, so. I used the exact same process as the first batch in this batch, where I took about a spoonful of liquid and distributed it through the dry and mixed it in thoroughly with my hands. But I found that this time, if I started mixing immediately, as I was adding the liquid, it tended to fizzle a little bit less. So if you're trying this out, I recommend doing that because it saves some of that citric acid baking soda reaction. Even though I was wearing gloves, I could feel when it got to the right consistency because it started feeling cool to my hands through the gloves and it started clumping really nicely in my hands as I squeezed it. Using the water spray bottle made a huge difference too because it would distribute the water much more evenly. I'm good. This is a little wet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's very touchy. I'm gonna try it with a different mold just to see if that's the 
mm -hmm. factor here because once I kind of get over the edge, it pops out just fine. To your left. Okay, that worked tremendously well. I think it was just the cups were a little wet. Okay. So that is now a bath bomb. <laughs> that went extremely quickly. I'm gonna make a bunch more of these and then I'll check back in. If your molds are sticking, try a fresh set of molds. It might be that they're wet. We're on to round three, round two, only one exploded. I was a little bit careless when I was taking it out of the mold, but I'm starting to get a better sense of how much goes into the mold. And I made nine instead of seven, like the first time around. So this time we're using Forget-Me-Not Blue as our color and Eucalyptus as our essential oil. And here's our bath bomb for round three. This process is relatively straightforward if you can get a sense of how wet it's supposed to be. And I really haven't run into too many problems aside from my mold getting a little sticky after it was used for a while. So I'm gonna make a bunch more in a bunch of different flavors and I'll see you in a bit. It is now more than two weeks later and I have ordered even more citric acid and made even more bath bombs. I have a beautiful rainbow of colors and smells here and I don't think I'll ever buy another bath bomb again. This was so much fun. I even managed to get a few wrapped up in cellophane with some little ribbons that I repurposed from last year so that he has some nice client gifts to give away and I have some gifts for my students. I wasted nothing. And I wanna show you that these actually work because I've been having so much fun with these. So I'm gonna pop this out into my hand. You ready? Fizzy. And that one. <clears throat> oh, oh, I breathed too much. <laughs> that one's eucalyptus. It's a little strong. I shouldn't have breathed so much. I think this is working really well. I'm so happy. Let's toss another one in here. It seems really straightforward. So if you need a really quick holiday gift this year and you don't know what to get somebody, this is pretty universal and everybody's gonna enjoy it. I am so happy I tried this out. It's something I'm going to be doing over and over and over. It was so straightforward and bath bombs are so expensive. I will link all of the instructions to what I did down below as well as all the materials I used. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if you've tried to make bath bombs before. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Watching. If you like content like this, please let me know by engaging down in the comments, liking, subscribing, or engaging on here or on any of my other social media platforms, but I'll see you next time. Bye for now.